In a post-apocalypse world, a world that has been entirely destroyed by extraterrestrial creatures that are called voids, a strange boy is found in the deepest part of the ruins. This boy, Leonis, turns out not to be your typical little boy, instead, he is the demon lord, having gone into a covenant with the goddess of rebellion about 1000 years ago. Linus, the demon lord, had gone into a deep sleep in hopes of reincarnating and ensuring the reincarnation of the goddess of rebellion, according to the prophecy made by the goddess. Upon reincarnation, Linus expects himself to be the highlight of the world, only to see he is only a young boy who has been rescued by a cute Holy Sword Academy member, Celia. In hopes of using Celia's link to that world and finding out what has caused the pandemic in the present world, Linus, accompanied by his maid Shirley and his friend Prince Blackies, follows Celia to the Holy Sword Academy. Will Linus succeed in fulfilling the Goddess of Rebellion's prophecy? How does he intend to handle things with Celia? Subscribe to watch Demon Sword Master Excalibur Academy on my channel starting October 1st, by Celia Ray Christelia, who is popularly called Celia. Regina Mercedes and Celia are in the ruins trying to investigate the hive. One thing that can't be taken away from Celia is her diligence. She is so diligent that she has been called Miss Brave at one point. She stands at death's door, proving brave enough for anyone to wonder where her bravery is from. They arrive at the seventh layer of the ruins, but they see that there are no signs of a void. Regina asks Celia if it is about time they withdraw from that layer, but she insists that she has received a report that they are making a hive deep in the ruins. So, she pleads that they investigate, even if it is a little further. Seeing her strength and diligence, Regina tells her she is diligent. She explains that the mission is very important and it goes deeply into the safety of their capital. Because if they allow any of the hive to go unchecked, it would be like they are letting them invade their capital. They arrive at a strange place in the ruins, and they find out it really looks fit for a king. They realize it is the king's tomb. Holding their camera in their hands, they want to see what is there without having any other thoughts in their heart. They contemplate if they should destroy the gate to the tomb so they can see what is there. Upon getting nearer to it, they see an inscription on the tomb they don't even understand the language, and they are left to wonder if it is an ancient language. They notice something, and it is really weird. It seems to them as if the gate is still breathing, like the system is still running, and it is looking like an ancient ruin. Courageously, Celia says she would like to check the surroundings. Regina doesn't want to follow her, so she asks her when she will be done with the checking, and Celia promises her she will be back very soon. Celia checks the letters once again, and she wonders what could really be behind that strange gate. As she touches the gate, the gate mysteriously opens, to their amazement. They see a person inside the gate. He doesn't understand where he is exactly and while trying to calculate the possibility of what could be happening to him, he assumes the reincarnation has succeeded. In about a thousand years have passed already. Who is this strange man? Why is he screaming that the noises are disturbing him? It was eventually they found out that they had awoken the demon lord from his slumber. In fact, the mausoleum should have been completely closed off by the sealing of the magic gate. The demon lord hears the girl speaking in human language without considering that they were the ones who saved him, he assumes that they are grave robbers and he decides to show them a sight of him. He commands them to perish and asks what audacity they have to rob the demon lord's grave. Just as the demon lord is about to give them his punishment, he stops. Celia realizes that the person who has come out of that tomb is a little child. She asks him what a little child is doing there, and it is at that point that the demon lord realizes he is just a little child. He looks at his hands and body and wonders what he has done wrong. He wonders if the reincarnation has failed him, and he tries to recall his reincarnation steps. Even if his reincarnation failed, he couldn't imagine that he would return to such a form. He says it is almost like he has gone back to his form that used to be called the Bracelianus, and he really doesn't know what to do. They ask him if he was locked up in a place like that or if he was captured by the voids. He really doesn't know what the voids are. They run closer to him to make him feel better. Seeing a random child locked in the tomb isn't something anyone can get accustomed to, so they really feel the need to make him feel better, unknown to them that he really doesn't need their help. He says he hates the human body, 
and Celia doesn't care about that. She calls herself his big sister and claims she would be there to protect him. He starts feeling dizzy, and he pushes her to stop, he almost faints due to hunger, and he gets more angry that he is in the human body because he feels the body is too weak. He can't imagine fainting because he is hungry while he doesn't feel he should appreciate Celia, he acknowledges that he really owes his life to her. On the other hand, Celia makes a call about the newly found child and asks that they look him up in the lost children list. If only she knew he could be her ancestor, sister. LOL. Regardless, she sits beside him and introduces herself to him. She tells him she is from the Seven Assault Gardens Holy Sword Training Academy, and she is 15 years old. The Demon Lord could understand her language, but he didn't understand what she introduced herself as. Trying to figure out his environment, he realizes she must have mistaken him for a child captured by a demonic beast. She asks for his name, and he introduces himself as Linus. To his shock, she claims the name is cute. Linus wonders how his name could be cute because in his prime days, that name was the same name that drove people into fear and made them scared. Well, times have changed, and he realizes that the younger generations haven't been taught about him, the undead king. Well, maybe he should blame their history teachers. She decides to call him Leo because it is a shorter version of his name and she asks him how old he is. He lies to her that he is 10 years old, and his main intention is to pretend to be whatever she wants him to be so he can get a grasp of his new environment and learn everything he needs to learn about his new environment. On the other hand, Celia's intention is to question him about how he found himself at that place. So she assumes he is an abandoned child and she asks him if he remembers how the voids looked when he was first captured. Again, he doesn't know what a void is this time around. He shows his ignorance and says he doesn't know what a void looks like. She is left with no other choice but to explain what void means to him. She tells him that the Holy Sword Knights are known to fight against voids, and voids are the enemies of humanity that came from another world. Leo tries to think of who the enemy could be. He wonders if another force has risen in these thousand years. He could recall that a thousand years ago, the enemies of humanity were the Demon Lord Army, the demons, and the one who betrayed the gods of light and waged war against the world. He hasn't heard anything about voids in the goddess prophecies before, so he is new to all of this. He knows there is no way he could explain such a situation to Celia, so he keeps shut. She tells him she has come there to scout for the void's location within the ruins. Before they find the gate, he realizes that it isn't like they intended to open him, and it was just by chance. However, another issue is how the gate could open by itself since it is meant to be sealed. He feels the need to know more about them and what time of the year he is in. So he asks her what year of the divine calendar they are in. In his own opinion, they should be in the year 1447 in the divine calendar, but she doesn't know anything about a divine calendar. She tells him they are in the 64th year of the human calendar. While he is still in shock, he hears a loud noise. Regina calls Celia and tells her to be careful. She tells Celia that a huge void is battling. She immediately holds him and asks if he is okay. She explains that it seems a void has appeared and her allies are engaging the void in battle. Leo is angry that the stupid void has appeared in the same mausoleum where he was laid to rest and where his allies are resting. If he allows the place to get destroyed by the void, it would be against his pride, so he won't let that happen. He jumps to fight, only to find out he is lazy and hopeless. He falls down immediately, and Celia goes to confirm if he is okay. She tells him that she will protect him and that he doesn't have any reason to worry. She lifts the restriction on her artificial relic called Ray Hawk, and she goes to join her people in fighting the void. She realizes it is an overclass void as several ogres appear. According to Leo, an ogre is a general term for man-eating beasts that were under the command of the Demon Lord Army's kitchen King Desulf. Celia tells Leo to get down as the huge monsters appear to fight them. Looking at the monsters, Leo figures they are enemies of humanity who imitate the appearance of old gods. He sees that the ogre she called isn't an ogre but more like an artificial being. Celia finds it difficult to attack them with the weapon in her hand, but Leo saves her by calling a chant and destroying them immediately. Celia eventually finds Regina in the commotion. 
Regina jumps toward her to ask her if she is okay. She explains that according to what she is seeing, it seems the ruins are really spawning grounds for the voids, just as Celia had suggested when they were about to enter the ruins. It is at that point that Regina notices a small child with Celia. She asks Celia who the child is, and Celia tells her that the child is being kept more profoundly in the ruins. They decide to talk about that later and face the monsters in front of them at the moment. They both realize that there isn't much they can do with the power they have at the moment. Celia brings out a holy sword that gets Leo terrified. He wonders what kind of weapon it is but he doesn't know it is the lifting restriction on the holy sword, which is called the drag howl. They also bring out another weapon called the counter, a huge type of void annihilating armament called the dragon slayer. Celia shoots so the void can get annihilated, but she shoots Leo's grave. Leo screams that his mausoleum has been destroyed. He is also concerned that the firepower of the weapon is something to behold, it is nothing like the one he knew in those days as it didn't produce any mana flare, so it means it isn't magic. He is still interested in how the firepower that Regina used could be similar to the fourth ranked magic called Lug Era. Regina asks them to get out of the ruins for their safety. She asks that they leave the void to her as she can defeat them herself. Since Celia is taking care of a child, she takes Regina's advice, and she leaves the ruins. She drags Leo along while Leo keeps thinking about his new reality. He figures that his reincarnation magic obviously gained and he turned back into his form as a human before he became the demon lord. Also, the world he had reincarnated to is fighting otherworldly monsters who are called voids, and they have invaded his mausoleum and destroyed it without his permission. Everything he is going through is out of his prediction. He wants to kill those monsters, but he can't do that because he isn't himself and he is very weak. So he really needs Celia so he can get information about his new world. They keep walking so they can get to the surface, but the journey seems long. He asks her if there are shortcuts so they can reach the surface early, but before they reach another void attacks them and snatches Leo from Celia's hand. Celia falls off and calls for Leo. Leo sees several voids around, they all look different. So Celia tells him those ones are the flight-capable type, they are called the Wyvern class. She begs Leo to run, but Leo insists on defeating them. He knows it would show Celia some of his powers, but he doesn't have any other choice. He commands them to disappear while Celia keeps calling him back. Celia begs him to run away, she tells him to escape with Regina and leave her to take care of the monsters. However, Celia still feels he is too weak to do anything and she defends him from dying from the Void's attack. She lays on the floor dying while he feels she has made a stupid move. He feels it is a pointless sacrifice because there is no way he wouldn't have survived such an attack, except for the fact that she saved him, that was really all she was worth. She is just a human girl who he had allowed to live so he could get more information about that world. He recalls that there was a girl like Celia in his days, and watching Celia stand up for him is the same way the girl had stood in front of him after he had been betrayed and lost everything to the people he had saved. She stood in front of him and told him that being a hero is boring, so instead of being a hero, he should become hers. That lady is the same one who revolted against the world and she was hated by the entire world, it is no one else than the goddess of betrayal. Thinking about her made him emotional, which makes him more unhappy about being human. He wonders how he had gotten back the emotions he had as a human. He thinks of how everything hasn't been going his way. He reincarnated as a human, his abode is being destroyed, he can't fight his enemy, and his savior who had saved him is about to die. He looks at Celia and he admits that she is brave. He admits that she has really piqued his interest a little. His robes are also too big for him to move in, and his feet hurt too, irrespective of that, he isn't ready to allow the monsters who had offended him this much to go free. In the end, he decides to sentence them to death. He brings out his sealed sin magic staff. It has been about a thousand years since he had used the weapon last. The weapon was his partner and the symbol of the death of the demon lord army. He starts fighting with